Welcome to the Cash Flow Couple Podcast. Welcome in. Bienvenue. Bienvenido. Konnichiwa. I'm not sure that's welcome. <laughs> you sit over there thinking, trying to think of other languages. <laughs> I like to introduce a podcast like that. I think it's cool. You know, I like languages and all that. For sure. So we were just sitting around having our normal discussion on a, what is today, Friday? No, today is Saturday. Oh, Saturday. See, I never know what day it is anymore. Yeah, we, we don't have to know. We don't have to know. And Unless the kids go to school. That's true. If the kids <laughs> Only go to one school. more day, baby. One more day of winter break. Really? Oh. They, go to, they go to school Monday? They go to school on Monday. See, I don't oh know. Gosh. Wendy Wendy knows more Holy than I do crap. because you're like <laughs> more affected by it, I think. Only one more day. Man, winter break is so long. You are and affected all more you... by it more, though, aren't you? What? You are affected by it more. I, I mean, think they... so. Well, they come after me. They're they like, come Mommy, after you. They come after and... you. They don't come after me as much. No. They don't ask you to do a whole... They I mean, don't I still notice that they're here, and, and I get annoyed, honestly, by all the, like... Friends. You get annoyed by the friends. I do. Well, they make a lot of noise. They do. I... It does... You know what? The noise does not bother me at all. I well, could care less about the noise. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's, it's not the, so much the noise. I mean, it's not like I want it to be quiet and all that kind of thing. It's just that they, I don't know. I find it annoying. I don't know why I just do. But I, and then I feel bad about it because I don't want to find it annoying. I don't, uh, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't even hear it half I'm the like, time. I'm like, kids are kids. I want them to have a good childhood and all that kind of thing. I, I I I feel conflicted about it, but it, it does bother me a little bit. Really? Why? I'm not exactly sure. I mean, we get psychoanalyzing on the. <laughs> but I I think it has. I'm not exactly sure, and I don't know why it bothers me. Uh, but I think it's because I. It's not that they're making noise because that's that's not something that they're kids. They do, and that's exactly my thing. I, they're kids. I want them to be kids. I don't want people to grow up like too early and all that and i want them to be happy and all that kind of thing but at the same time i i maybe it's because we sit out i sit out in the garage a lot and i want them to be having good like healthy experiences maybe is the as a good word to put it healthy and sometimes i worry that they're doing something they shouldn't be doing or they're I don't know, man. I want to be good members of society and I, I, <laughs> an upstanding citizen. Yeah. So maybe over, maybe maybe this is it. Maybe over worrying about it is a sign of a good parent rather than a bad. So maybe <laughs> I should true. think that I'm doing good because I actually give a crap. You know what I mean? You are a good father. I try to be. That's true. I try to be, and I, I, I'm very cogn- cognix cognizant. Is that the word? Yep. It's hard for me to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> These are words that I read, but it's Especially hard for me to when pronounce. You're three sheets to the wind. Well, there's part of that, yeah. But the yes. So yeah. I mean I I try to be a I try to be a good dad. I try to be dad. a good parent. But I think we all don't you worry about that a little bit? That you're doing the right thing. Like I think every parent probably worries about that a lot, but it's a day by day basis. I mean, you can only take it one moment at a time, right? So, and it 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 shows itself when when friends come over and like take for example today when one of Emma is our seven year old daughter. She, her friend came over and and then her friend's brother came over, right? Yeah. They are not that they, they don't they don't listen to what we say. So not necessarily, yeah. And and that's what I worry about. So that's what I really that's what I spend my time doing is keeping my ear out for s- certain things that happen when when they're around. So I know that when they're around that I need to have one ear listening to everything that's going on because I I know that 
something's going to go down. Well, that's true. You do hear more than me. I do. Because I have an, a uterus. And you're just like, I can suck less what Woody told me earlier this week. <laughs> She's like, I know this because I have a uterus. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. <laughs> But also very true. <laughs> well. And I was like, do you have like radar in the address? <laughs> or is there some kind of special uh, well, circuitry in there or something? You, if but, you have a uterus, you just know. And all you other mothers out there know exactly what I'm talking I'm, about. I'm, yeah, okay. I'm sure you do. But I, I don't deny the drunk. fact that there's, there's something to do. Something something to that. Yes. Let's put it that way. Yes. Well, it's, let's call it the mothering instinct. Yes. So that's not what we were actually talking so about. So we were sitting we around the garage. One more and day of winter break for the children. One more day of winter break. Go yes. to school. Go the fuck to school. <laughs> this is a family show. You can't oh, say fuck. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Go to school, please. Remember that, that t-shirt I showed you earlier? <laughs> yes. It was uh, the uh, the Muppet dude that doesn't... What's his name? Vert de Furt. Yeah, Vert de Furt. <laughs> that was awesome. It's like the chef dude, the yes, Muppet from guy. The Muppets, yes. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was a good one. It was like Vert de Furt. Vert I, de Furt. I really want that shirt, but I'm not sure that I would wear it in public. Well. Although my mindset is getting to the place where I might wear that in public. <laughs> You're just like, I don't give her furt. <laughs> no, it's not that I don't give a furt. It's that... I don't know. I think I could get to the place where I might be wear, the, wear that shirt. <laughs> but that's not what we were talking about. No. So we were having a strategic business conference. A strategic business <laughs> conference? A BSC. A I like that. No, well, a strategic would be strategic. S, right? A strategic S B C. Right? Yep. We're having a strategic business conference. I like that. It's yep. better than like just impromptu impromptu business meeting. Well, you know, we're always talking about business. We'd never stop talking about business. But that would be IBM, which is like copyrighted. Yeah. Well, we can't say that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll call it a strategic business conference. Yes. Is that what it was? Okay. We are. We're always talking about business. We, we never do. Stop. We sit around and we we talk business quite a bit. Yes, we do. Well, this is what we do. And so we were sitting out here in the garage like we normally do, and we're having these conversations, and I realized that it's Saturday, and we probably should put a co- podcast out this week. So I went and got the microphones and said, all right, we're doing a podcast, Wendy. I'm like, oh, okay. Just keep talking. <laughs> just just pretend like it's normal. Ignore the microphone. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the That's microphone. right. It's like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> well what were we talking about again well refresh so my, refresh my memory yeah so i'm good at like rewinding i was saying no no you gotta rewind <laughs> right and go back and explain so uh last week we were talking about that we got into the uh short-term rental business right and so this week we actually uh part of our market research was to book a competitor's short-term rental in Charlotte and go stay in it. And so that's what we did on Friday. Today's Saturday. So we did that yesterday. Yeah, last night. We last got night back. we stayed at a yep. competitor's unit, Yep, which was interesting. It was interesting. Uh, to see what other people do. And we particularly picked this one, or at least I did. I booked it. But I picked it because it stood out to me as – Something that, or, or at least a, a place that was rented fairly often and was a good spot in like uptown. You know, our, the current units we have are, they're in Charlotte, but if you've been to Charlotte, there is uptown where all the skyscrapers are. And then there's Charlotte that's surrounding and, and our units are surrounding they're about 15 minutes away from yeah, uptown. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, you know, a 10, 10 minute drive, but they're not the, when I think of uptown, I think of like, you know, tall condo units or the Bank of America building, which, you know, isn't residential, but, you know, I'm thinking like. Panther Stadium. Yeah, like 
big skyscraper type stuff. If that this makes... was real close to Uptown. This I mean, one was. It was, it was it... actually in Uptown. Yeah, it was. And so it was in a it was in a building that was not newer, but and not the tallest, but it definitely had really good views, and that's why I picked that one. Because I was like, hey, that's in a great location that seems like someplace we would like to be. Let's go stay, you know, stay there and see what they do and see, you know, if this is a building that we could get into or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's really why we went, right? <laughs> that is why we went. <laughs> Just to see. I mean, if they're doing it, why can't we go do it too, right? Sure. And we had fun with it. I mean, sure. it's like, hey, let's go stay uptown. And we stayed and we, um, we ate at the, uh, what do you call that? Red the ginger hibachi. Red ginger is the specific place. Yeah. Hibachi. But it's hibachi grill, like the Japanese, Japanese that yeah. they cook in front of the table. And the kids just love that. Yeah. Because the kids just... have to come with us, right? Right. So Emma and CJ came and we went to the uh, hibachi grill where they. They you know, love to do. They love hibachi. They do all the fire on the yeah. grill and do so the fun. volcano. I think all those places do yeah. the exact same thing, don't yep. they? Mm-hmm. Not exactly. It depends on what's you know chef you get or whatever but well they all do the volcano with the onions they do the yeah and they do the like thing with the spatula yeah. and like banging around and yeah. all that and something with an egg and occasionally there's something that goes in their hat and something they want to throw in your mouth yeah yeah <laughs> this particular place i made it that's right that's, yes that's right i did it they will, they will, they will like launch stuff. Like, uh, I think that this place is zucchini and they'll launch it and you can like catch it in your mouth. And they also have the sake in the sake. That's right. Yes. Like in a ketchup no, bottle type deal yes. that you squeeze. Yes. And they'll like spray it in your mouth if you want. And uh, if I remember the last time we went to that place, Wendy was the person that was like, I'll do the sake. Oh, God. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, my God. What's funny is they, they have you open your mouth and they're spraying it across the table in this ketchup bottle. <laughs> and you open your mouth and once they make contact and it's like in your mouth. Yeah. There's no, like, telling them, like, <laughs> no, I'm done, right? Like, what do you do? Like, do the cutthroat thing? <laughs> and the Say, gag. no, re- I'm good. <laughs> and the gag reflex cu- cooks in. And yeah, you're, you're just, like, like <laughs> stuck until they decide to qu- stop squeezing. <laughs> and I thought about that when I went there. I was like, if that dude tell at- asked me, I'm not doing it. No way. And he did ask me, and I was like, no, nah, I'm good. And I pointed at Wendy. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Did you like, really? Yes. Motherfucker. <laughs> He's like, do you want it? And no. I was like, no, she'll do it. <laughs> no. Damn you. I didn't know you did that. That's why he offered it to you. No shit. Yes. Damn. It was pretty funny. I'm going to punch you in the table. I mean, I was later. laughing inside, but. <laughs> <laughs> well. so, so that's what happened there. <sighs> But anyway, so we stayed at this place, and it was it was interesting because we have a certain system that we do, and we've kind of like got it down. Like we have, you know, the messaging that we do, we have the experience that we provide, the check in process. You know, it's it's very consistent across all of our current properties, and this one was like totally different. And it was it was a different experience. It was it was it, it wasn't quite what I and I don't want this isn't meant as a criticism. Like if somebody listens to this and says, "Hey, that's my property," it, it's really constructive feedback. But it but it was like their their check in process was more difficult. It, well, I mean, it, it it wasn't just a house. That's true. So ours are. Ours are houses, and they're not high-rise condos. So we should say that. So the check-in process, obviously, is going to be different. But the directions to get to the unit was a little confusing, i got to admit. Yeah, that that was one of the things about it. Is we had a hard time finding If you put the address it. in yeah. that they give you. Yeah. Google Maps didn't take you there. It didn't take you to like the place you need to actually be. Right. If that makes sense. Right. Which is which is common actually in Uptown. Yeah, in Uptown is in places like that and 
in any city probably if you go to a building it doesn't take you to the actual like entrance to the parking garage i imagine that's true but but that's different from our properties where they are houses and you do get directions direct directly to the driveway basically right so so we don't really have anybody ask us those kind of questions right but i imagine that these people get asked that question I'm all sure they the do. time i'm sure they do and it's interesting because if they get asked this question all the time why have they not done a better job of making the directions more clear well that was part of it that was part of what we observed is so again backing up a little bit when you when people message you off of whatever platform it is it could be airbnb it could be home away it could be you know VRBO. vrbo it could be they they direct booked with you whatever it is when you're having those communications with your potential guests it turns out that if you do this a lot you end up saying the same thing a lot over and over. And so either you have a canned message that you're like copy pasting to people or you have like what we have, we have a, a system that it's called smart BNB, which you're welcome to look up. But what it does is it allows you to kind of automate some of these responses so that you're not yeah, constantly great. typing them over and over. Um, but it's the same idea, you know. You're, it's a, it's kind of a canned response. If that, if that's that's a bad word for it, because that makes it sound bad. But you really do. You 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 can only say like the same thing so many times before you're like, okay, I need to put this in like a word document at right. least, right? And so copy paste it. Why you know that they've gotten that question before? So why have they not taken the time? To put that into their original check-in message. Yeah, like their messages. Yeah, yeah I, I get it. And and they didn't do a terrible job. No, it it was actually terrible. pretty good. Like you could tell that they had had this, you know, kind of experience like I need to say the same thing over and over. And you kind of got the idea that it was copy paste. But at the same time, it was it felt like old information. Yes. Like, there's got to people people that sure. have said, hey, man, the Google Maps didn't take me to the right place. Right. Because in this particular case, it was like, okay, well, Google Maps takes you to the front of the building. Where you really need to go is, like, to the back of the building. And in Charlotte, like a lot of cities, it's a grid system, right? So most roads are, like, one way. And so if you miss the place you got to go... <laughs> Well, you got to go around the block, yep. right? And this one was like a go around the block type of thing, yep. and and figure it out. And and we did, sure, we did from their directions. We did figure it out without having to actually call them. So maybe that's a a plus. But I can see how, and I don't want to say this is the wrong way. <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say. But there's fifty percent of people that aren't going to find it. And they're just not based on the instructions they gave. Yes. We're exactly. used to, I, and again, I don't want to be like John and when you're like really smart or, or something, but we're used to figuring out problems like that just because we're in real estate and that kind of thing. And, you know, and we're in that business where things aren't are always like where you think they ought to be. And <laughs> right. So we get a lot of practice at it is what I'm trying to say. Things are not always as they seem. For you sure. know, you, you get a lot of practice at it after a while. You just do. And you become kind of a problem solver and have that kind of mindset. And I don't mean to, to say anything about anybody that isn't, but I'm just saying that if you aren't that way, if you're, if you're used to, the blue line takes you where the blue line is supposed to take you. This would have been hard to find. Yeah. And I'm only making the observation as I want to make my, sure my customers can find my right building as easily as possible without as much interaction as I it, well without me interacting at all, really. Right. And we're always kind of, that's kind of the discussion we were having, you know, if we, 
if we rented a place in this building, what would our instructions be? How would we make this better? And that was the whole point of going there, really. It, part of it was scoping out a competitor. But part of it was, hey, this is a building I know that you can do this in. Let's go let, let, you do know. it, too. Yeah, right. Let's see if this is one that works for us as well. It fit. It, does it fit into our existing system? Right. Does it? Yeah. Does it fit in our system? And how much trouble is it going to be? Right. Because <laughs> if you got to go around the block, because this one was like you got to go around like this dead end street. Yeah. On the back but of the. I building. felt like their directions could have been better. They could have been. Yeah. I mean, they could have said, "Hey, Google Maps is not going to take you where you need to be." Here's what you need to do. Right. And that's what you probably should say. Yes. And so why did they, why did they not do it? Yeah. Is my question. So that was the first part. But problem we had. Yeah. So we couldn't find it to begin with. Yeah. And again, we always talk about experiences, right? Yes. It's not really like a, it's right. not like a hotel. Right. Well, it is in that, in a, in a way. But it's, it's more than a hotel. But it's an experience. It's an you know, experience. you're not really selling a place to sleep. Exactly. You're you're selling an experience. Yes. You know how it, you know I've come from out of town. Maybe you know how easy is this to find? How do I feel about it? Exactly. How do I? You know, is it? Does it feel like a comfortable place to stay? Do I feel like that I've been catered to? Yes. And all that kind of thing. And just the initial impression finding the place is a big part of that because that kind of sets the tone yes. for the rest of the stay, doesn't it? Yep. Agreed. And we only stayed one night, which was fine. I, I can see how if you – and we had this conversation earlier. I can see if you stayed like a week. Like the first night you might have to ask questions and you figured it out and then it was fine after that. Well, once you find it one time, you can find it again. You can, yeah. But I that was our first kind of criticism of or maybe positive feedback would be the, the better idea. But yeah, I mean if I had to provide positive feedback, that would that's what it would be. Like Well then once better you, instructions. What yeah. So that that was that was it is what it is. It is. So we finally found it, right? And then they give us the gate code. It, which is good, and and then we get into the gate. Yes, and then we drive a suburban. Yeah, well, it was like a parking garage. It was a parking garage, yeah. and we drive a suburban. I'm gonna say that one more time. We drive a suburban. <laughs> it's called the Beast for a reason. Yeah, it's huge. It is huge. I don't know how John got it in that parking space. But he is the master. No, I learned from Wendy. Well, because Wendy drove the suburban a lot more than I did. I did initially, and I was like, "How do you drive this thing?" Well, after a while, you just kind of get. But you used do, to yeah. It. I started driving it, and like after a you've while, become, it's like you kind of get pretty good at it, and then you start thinking, "This is always my beast. joke." It's like I could get a job with like cats, yeah, for sure. Which is <laughs> cats is like. Charlotte area transit system. Yeah. That's the bus drivers the bus. in Charlotte. Yes. So like I could get a job as a bus driver a now because I can the bus. park the suburban, right? <laughs> you do. You it, you drive a big suburban in um the uh parking Almost garages anywhere, yeah, but yeah. now. I mean, because you know, a year ago I was driving up to the courthouse and parking in the parking lot in the in the courthouse. That's right. Like, they have. That's why you got good at it. That's how they, I got good at it. They have a parking deck there too. Yeah. 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 It's exactly how that worked. But John has become a master of the beast. Yeah. So I did. I didn't manage to park it because that was part of it. It's like here's your assigned parking space. Right. Yeah. We had an assigned parking space. So John finally got us in there. I don't know how he did it, but he did. Because I'm the master. <laughs> you already said it. So it's on tape. <laughs> Tape. Now I feel like I'm old. <laughs> it's on recording. It's on tape. We're gonna rewind it. <laughs> it's on digital. It's in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Got to use a pencil. <laughs> right. <laughs> rewind the tape. <laughs> Shit. So then we get we we finally park, 
And then we have to go locate the lockbox. Yes. Which is in the directions it said it was the lockbox was to the right of the elevators. Yes, which turned out to be the left of the elevators. However, it was not. Yes. It was to the left of the elevators. Yes. So I'm not sure if somebody doesn't know their right from their left, but what ifs? But so, again, something that probably should have been corrected at right? some point because somebody is bound to have oh said. Oh my God. It's so frustrating. Yes. It's so frustrating. Yes. <laughs> I won't go over that again, but <laughs> it's frustrating. Bound to have said. Totally. So why not take the time to it should have been just fixed, yeah. change your message a little bit? But anyway, so we finally find the lockbox after walking around it, walking around the elevators and like, oh, okay, here it is. All right. And so we have to use our phone as a flashlight to be able to see how to get into this lockbox. And yes. we have the lockbox code. So we've got the code to get into the parking deck. We've got the code to get into the lockbox. And now we get into the lockbox and we've got the key. We you finally, finally get, get a key. key. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt. It, it's exactly it's what John like, said. Um, what's that? And movie the kids were like, "Oh, a scavenger hunt." <laughs> what's that movie with Nicolas Cage where he does the? Um, oh, National Treasure. Yes, yeah. it was like that. Yep. It was like you know, yep. figure out the little codes yep. to like get into everything, <laughs> which makes it sound a lot cooler than it is. Especially if you're like, I mean, I'm thinking of my my customers like if they right. come in off a long flight and they're like t- right. tired or whatever, right. Which we were actually. Oh, yeah, totally. By the time we, we got had there. Just had hibachi. Even and, though it was local, we were like, was, we had our kids and they're like ready to, yeah, you know, pass, pass out. out. And plus, I just ate like three times as much as I <laughs> yes. probably should have. I was ready to go to bed. But we were ready to get in. And it was like, oh my God, we had to go around the block twice. Then we had to f- figure out that the gate code, because they give you the gate code. But they don't tell you that you got to hit like pound. Right. I forgot about that. And they that. do. If you read closely, it says like pound, pound whatever, whatever number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you, I can see somebody reading that and just saying, okay, that's number. Right. You know, like the I pound did. sign could be number. I did. I didn't know you were supposed to press pound. See, right. Pound sign. And so you should probably, should probably just say, hey, you got to press pound or press hashtag if you're younger, right? <laughs> If you if you notice that, oh my like, God, that it's is not hilarious. the pound, it's, it's the not the pound, sign. it's not the pound sign anymore. It's no, hashtag. It's, ha- it's hashtag oh because God, I'm well, so that's, what, old. that's what you use online, right? If I'm you're gonna, so old. you know, hashtag whatever. Okay, and that's the sign for it. I can totally get that. Yeah, you know, the times change, but we we we're old, so we call it the pound sign. <laughs> 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 but whatever. So we had to go around the block a couple of times to find it. <laughs> And then we had to go around the block a, at least once because we didn't put hashtag whatever number. But we finally got in there. And then we have to go through this lock box. And we finally get the dang key. Okay. Oh, we finally got the key. Okay. And then we got in the elevator, right? Right, right, right. And we know what floor we need to go to. Yes. So we get in the elevator and... You have to swipe the key fob. Yeah, but we didn't know that. And nobody told us that we had to swipe the key fob because it wasn't in the directions. Exactly. So we get in the elevator and, you know, as a family, mommy and daddy don't get to press the buttons. It's either CJ not. or Emma and they take turns. And Emma's always like, I want to press the button. <laughs> right. She's like, all right, press the button. It's eight, right? Or set or whatever it was. And so she presses it and nothing happens. And so she presses again and nothing happens. And I see this thing on the wall that looks like you should swipe a key fob, right? Good thing daddy's observant. I, I'm observant. Yes, but I have I used to work at a place where you had to swipe a key fob to get in. So I see that and it makes sense to me, just in my head. But I can, again. They should mention that again, in the you message. Should mention that. You got to mention stuff like that. You know, they get complaints about that all the time. And and you can get that in your head. If you're like me and you just like, I know what that is. Take the time right? but you, to put it in the message. Yes. Come on now. It's not that hard. But I knew we figured it out. We I said, oh, you out. probably got to swipe it. But how get... many messages do they get about? Probably. 
hey, I could, can't work the elevator. And you right. know, people are standing in the elevator texting or calling them saying, hey, I can't go up. Why can I not go up? Right. And you can can you imagine how frustrating this oh is? Oh, my that, God. Okay, now I've circled the block twice. Right. I've looked on the right side of the elevator for like 30 minutes and found out it was on the left. Right. I finally fumbled with the lock and got my key. I get in the elevator and it won't go anywhere. Oh my god! And now I've got to call somebody again. Oh my god! The check-in process is not looking so good. Right, and we're not even in there yet. We're not even in there yet. Wow. Now, to be fair, we figured it out. Yes. Without calling anybody, we could do so much better. We could do better. We could do better. So we're in the elevator. We go up. Right, we we swipe the thing. the 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 button works now. We go up to the unit. We get out. The directions to the actual unit weren't bad. Like the, we found that right away. Right. Yeah, but it didn't tell us to go right. No, it did. The instructions it said go. It said go left. You actually go left. Oh, you go left. Okay. Out of the elevator. Okay. Maybe you didn't see that part because we didn't. were kind of we were kind of battling over our phones at the point at that point because i was using mine to navigate and 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 wendy's phone gets like confiscated by emma if we drive anywhere over like five minutes so oh, yeah totally but I, I did read that those those directions weren't bad okay yeah i didn't read that far we did so i i knew that like go to the left of it said go out of the elevator into the well, left that's and we, good. I, we found it pretty easily and then got in which was fine but all this talk about just a check in shouldn't be a thing, right? Even if it even if you do have to jump through all those hoops, it should it should be explained. Right? They could have done a lot better job. Yeah. And I almost wanted to like call <laughs> and just pretend like I couldn't figure it out and see what would happen. Just to see what would happen. To see what, what the response was. Right. But I didn't do that. That right. was that was something I probably shouldn't have, should have done, but I didn't. Yeah, well, you know, would you know, have been I was interesting. Doing market research and all that, right? But, but whatever. So we got in, and so we got in, and it was very underwhelming. It was very underwhelming. I mean, it was not. It was renovated, like you could tell that. I mean, it had the nice granite countertops, the nice cabinets. Yeah, it wasn't. Period. The, the building nice, is older. The nice floors. You could tell that it had been renovated yes but so somebody with a real estate mindset far as the decor went, went in there and fixed it yeah i mean it, it was very underwhelming there was no decor at all they had a picture above the couch in the living room yeah and a um like a, a big wall clock above the bed in the bedroom because it was only a, a one bedroom. That's true. It was a one bedroom condo with a pull out couch in the, the living room couch, where yeah. the kids and slept. a balcony, which was and cool. a balcony, which was great. I really and it did really have a liked. great view, and it did. It had a really good view. I mean, it wasn't the best, but no, I mean, it was. Yeah, it it, it was good. It was good. I, it was I, good. I, I it wasn't. Don't have any complaints about. And that. it was a good area too. It was. It was a, good, it was a nice, safe area, it Charlotte. Was, it was. It was one of the better places to be in Charlotte. To be it honest was. with you, yeah. yes. And it was walk the walk score and the walkability of it. You could walk anywhere. True, and we did uptown. Yeah. And it, I don't have any complaints about the location. Yeah, at all. The location was great. Yeah, but the actual unit itself and the check-in process, which we spent like thirty minutes on, it was wasn't it? that that was a big deal. It I was, mean, that's what your guests are going to think about. Disappointing. But you're also right. The when you go in, it's kind of just like blah, blah. Yeah, it's like I could have checked into the Marriott. Yes, and not had that's exactly what it felt. You like. know what? I could have checked into the Marriott exactly. and not had all that trouble yes. checking in. Yes, I could have. Because I, I could have just gone to the front desk and been here. Yes, key. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, what was the advantage of staying there over somewhere else? I, do, I don't know. N- nothing. 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 And maybe, maybe that's maybe that's what we were trying to get at earlier because yeah. we were sitting out here mulling over like. There's something wrong with it that I couldn't put my finger on. Because there's some other stuff we could mention too. Like, 
the beds weren't that comfortable. The 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 furniture. Was, I mean, you you mentioned the decor. There wasn't a lot, but even like the furniture was kind of like it was almost like um, this is our old furniture. <laughs> it's exactly what it felt like, and we just like the we TV bought new was stuff. Small. Yeah, like we bought new stuff and we put our old stuff in here. The remotes were complicated. Yes, it. And they had, I mean, they provided stuff. I don't, I don't want to get that wrong. I mean, they provided cable. Right. And they provided TVs and they provided beds. I mean, linens and stuff. But even like, like the, yeah, you're right. Like it was, like there was two different TVs. There was one in the living room, living room and one in the bedroom, but they were totally different brands. They had totally different remotes. Yep. Uh, one of them actually, the batteries didn't work, so That's one right. of the remotes didn't work. That's right. One of the remotes didn't work um, to the living room, and it was like corroded in yeah. there, like it hasn't worked for a while, and just like right. nobody's said anything about it. Which we should probably say. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll provide feedback just to just to help people out, right? But there was um, the you know, if I wanted to cook in there, I don't know if there was like a ton of. I didn't really spend a whole lot of time looking through the I cabinets. I did. I went through the cabinets just to I see because we provide like s- everything. Right. Well, like we you're gonna fully stock the kitchen. Yeah. I mean, we had people come like cook Thanksgiving dinner. Right. And had everything. Right. But this Go this away. place, I don't know that you could Go do away. that. Yeah, I don't. I mean, even the Keurig machine was. Yeah, it was small. It was there, but it was like the one they used to have. Right. That's you know, exactly and they bought a new one and put that like. one in there. Exactly what it felt like. Like, and, and almost everything was, in that everything place, was hand me downs. Yes, every yes, what you said earlier. Yes, like the TV in the bedroom was like super small, and it was like right. Like hey, I don't we'll even think you can buy a TV this. that small anymore. Right, <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so it was like, hey, we got this new TV. Oh well, we'll just put the old one in the rental. Right. It, and it felt that way. Yes. Like some of it yes. was okay. Like some of the furniture like was newer, but it's like I went down to Target and bought it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the dresser that they had. Which isn't the... necessarily bad, I guess. No, if... I can make Target look good. I know you can, but it's like that was the only thing that was there. And then there was like nothing else. Right. It, there was it wasn't no, like. It or, wasn't homey. It, it wasn't was homey. Was it, it wasn't it, like. It was it a hotel homey. room. It was a hotel room. It was a hotel room mm-hmm. with a difficult yes. ass check in. Yes. <laughs> is exact, what it was. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I mean, seriously, we could have yeah. stayed at the Omni Charlotte yes. yeah. for the price we paid. Yes. And had probably a better check in experience. Been more uptown. And maybe had more room. But mm-hmm. Maybe that was the one thing it had is maybe a little more room than a hotel. It was spacious. Because it was. You like know, the it's bathroom kind of like a suite. Was like it had a bedroom and a right, right. The, but the bathroom was huge. It was bigger than a hotel, and it for had sure. a, a stackable washer and dryer in That's it. That's true. It did have a washer and dryer in it. So, so you had that, but I mean, it wasn't that great. It really wasn't. I, I gotta mean, be honest. I'm. I, I was not. It was okay. impressed. And and we both said. It's not a place that we would make a point to come back to. No, that that's that is one thing that I said. I I would I would not go back. I mean, if I'm going, if I'm a business traveler and I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to be coming to Charlotte, you know, every other month or whatever. I would not make a special point to reserve this room again. I would not go back. Yeah, or even like, you know, we're a family, so we're a different customer than a business traveler, but we wouldn't probably make a no, point to go back there either. I would not. It, it, it would, the experience was just okay. Walmart. It was Walmart. Yeah, so we talk about that a lot. You should probably explain that. Oh, okay. So in the in, in the world of the short-term rentals we have different customer levels yeah so you got to so figure we've out we've got who who are you looking to serve yeah. right cuz so, i think a lot of people do that backwards they find a place and then they say yes. oh well i'm going to make this uh, right 
a short term rental. Quote quote Airbnb or short term rental, right. right? So But we kind of do it backwards because right. that's what we've been taught is say, no, f- go figure out we who need, your customer is. Right. right. So we've already figured out who our customer is. And our customer is families coming into town for a life event, weddings, funerals, somebody staying in the hospital, um, you know, any, any kind of um, uh, c- concerts or anything like that. But we cater to families. We do. So we, we put a lot because of stuff we, in our units that's we are fam- family we, we oriented. We are a family. Yeah, that, that makes sense to us, like serve well, the we customer who we relate to them better. We, we relate to them. We do. So that's why we cater to families. I mean, I know what it's like to have to travel on an airplane with a car seat and a stroller and a high chair and a pack and play and all that bullshit. Right. And I don't want to have to do that. Right. That's why we put it in our unit. And that's why we put that in our units. But we have a clearly defined customer model. Right. This is who we cater to. Right. So in, in that world, you can provide experiences that are of three different levels. Yeah. And that could be for... You know, it doesn't have to be families with children. No, no, it's just. But stop even them even off. within stop. whatever customer you're serving, it could be if you're doing business travelers or you're doing um, people that are coming to town for sporting events. Like right. we have, we do have people that come. Sure, to town we have for, lots. You know, Panthers uh-huh. games or sure. Hornets games, definitely, or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when they get there, it's kind of like, what are they expecting? Right. Right. But you have these three different levels, right? So you've got the Walmart level, the Target level, and the Nordstrom level. So which level do you want to provide? What what type of experience is a better word? What type of experience do you want to provide for your guests? And I felt like the one that we stayed at last night was a Walmart experience. The decor was minimal. It was not, it, it was very underwhelming. I was not blown away by, by the experience at all. I, w- I would consider that a Walmart experience. Yeah. However, the experience that we provide for our guests, I would consider a Target experience. Yeah, Target Plus. I would say yes. Not quite the Nordstrom, but definitely because we put in a lot of thought about who our customer is and what they expect, the details that we provide in our units are so precisely well thought out that the feedback that we get from our guests prove my point. Oh yeah. Well, you could tell that the, when you get feedback from guests that they stayed there because you did, you provided this, you know, you advertised as what it was and then what they expected was when they got was what they got when they got there and 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 to back to your point about like Walmart, Target and Nordstroms you know when you walk into those different stores you have a different expectation yes i mean that's I'll, what it's all about it's not that Walmart mm-hmm. is a no you know, I it's not that Nordstrom is Walmart better than all Walmart the time. it's that when you walk in there that you expect yes a certain thing from, or you maybe you don't expect certain things from Walmart that you do expect from Nordstrom, right? Sure. Like, and when I go in a, a Walmart, I don't expect there to be a Starbucks in it, right? But yet, when I walk, when I into walk into a, a Target, I Target, do. I expect there to be a Starbucks. There's going to be a Starbucks in there. There's right? going to be a Starbucks in there. Now in Walmart, and, they have Starbucks coffee, right? You can buy it. I can buy it, but I got to take it home and brew it in Target. 
There's can, a Starbucks in exactly. there. Exactly. And but, their carts are better. When do you know yes, I'm talking about this other yes, day? Yes, that's right. Like the, you know, you go in yep. a Walmart, you might get a, a raggedy ass. Right. right? cart like it's just totally. the look of the draw but whether you target, get the one with the, like the crazy uh thing on the front you know that makes a lot of noise all the carts at target are well the good yes the the the, the carts are good yes you don't there is no bad cart at target right. and if i go to nordstrom there aren't carts that's exactly right right if i and go to somebody nordstrom, hands you a Yes. Starbucks yes. coffee on Somebody's your way Somebody's going to bring me Starbucks. Yes. Exactly. And then wait on me and go help pick out my stuff. But the point is that Walmart, Target, and Nordstrom's all sell some similar products, don't they? Yes, they all sell shirts. They all sell t-shirts. But I know that at Walmart, I'm going to get a $6 t-shirt. At Target, I'm going to get a $15 t-shirt. And at Nordstrom, I'm going to get like a $65 t-shirt. But when I go to Nordstrom, I know that. Yes. And I'm not paying for the t-shirt. I'm paying for the experience. Yes. And I'm paying for the quality of the product, too. Okay. What you just said right there is key. It is. And and I think that. In the short-term rental business. Yes. And you have to kind of decide. It's okay to serve Walmart customers. Yes. It's but, the expectation. Yes. But you have to, you have to market to those customers and say yes hey i'm walmart we offer the lowest prices right right just like walmart does right best price every day yes and nordstrom never says best price every day no because they, they're not they advertise something totally different no. they advertise best experience yes you know best quality all that kind of stuff you're going to be taken care of but they charge for it they don't but have Walmart prices. you know prices. that going into Nordstrom's. You do, yes. You and, already have that preconceived notion. Yes. That when you go to Nordstrom's, you already know what to expect. Yes. So you, have, you need to decide that and say, yes. and we have. Yes, We've said, we have. hey, we don't, we don't serve Walmart customers. No, we do not. We don't serve Nordstrom customers, no. really, although I kind of think our units are really <laughs> nice. And I don't think we serve, serve Target customers really either. Our target customer is really somebody that's like between our target customer. This is a shame that the name is the same. <laughs> I don't mean the target, but our ideal customer is somewhere between Target, target and Nordstrom. And Nordstrom, yes. Because we're not going over there and we don't have like a butler and a. Right. You know, we don't have like valet parking, but we do have nice places. Yes that have the nicest stuff in them that we can provide short of so you know the red carpet service so i think we're somewhere a little north of target but would, we're not i would say so yeah we're not nordstrom's we're definitely not walmart no definitely and the problem well, our with this prices pl- are reflected in that as yeah, well i mean we don't reflect, have the yes. the lowest price in the market because that's not the customer that we're trying to attract well that's just it and just as an aside you know coming from the real estate world when you want to say what could i make on a short-term rental it it's not like comping property in the real estate world where it's a three two in this neighborhood right because it's not just it's not the real estate it's the experience so even if you had two even if we were in the same building is this place we stayed this weekend? We would charge more than them. Yes, we would. And it's the exact same space, but it's not about the space or it's the location. About the it's experience. about the experience, right? Yep. And that it is the hospitality business. It's not real estate. And that's one of the things that we've really learned about this business. Yep. And it's something that really was, a. I think, maybe that's what was glaring at us as we stayed there is this is almost advertised as a yeah it was, it was advertised as a target nor, not I would yeah, say target. not Nordstrom but it was advertised as a nicer than Walmart experience yes but when you got there it, it was, was Walmart. Walmart yep yeah I agree maybe that's what it was yep I mean, even the Keurig machine was small. I mean, I'm I'm not. I know we keep going back to that Keurig machine. That 
they uh, I should be grateful that there was a Keurig machine in there to begin with. Sure, but but everybody who's got a short term rental has a Keurig machine. Almost, yeah. I think right? everybody's picked up. I on mean, that. that's like a that's like a standard. Yes. But you, but it's in, not about that. It's not about it, that. There's a in, Keurig machine. It's in not our about units, that. we have the nice Keurig machine. But it's not. Yes, but and it's about the have, experience. We have the nice K cups, and we have creamer, which we didn't like. Good have. creamer. Like I, I'm not talking about powdered creamer here. Right. I'm talking about. And you're always flavored. saying that because that's what we got this weekend, right? Yes, um, and that's we got the a, crappy Keurig machine. I'm a coffee drinker. We got. We provide tea. Did you see any tea in no, that? No, we unit? have a tea kettle. We have tea, but we're a different experience than they are. The difference is, I don't think they've thought that through that way see i don't think that they are treating it like a business well that could be too i I think there's a lot of a lot of that in this space currently yes because let's be frank it anybody with a cell phone and a space to rent can go take pictures and put it on airbnb and rent it they're going to get bookings you just are that's where we are at in this market right now, but that's not the future of the market. That because, is that is because exact, there are people. What that you are, just said is key. That's true, and and that's been true for a while, but that is changing because and as then, people stay yes. in the next three years, yes, as people stay at places like ours yes. that are run professionally uh-huh. and have these kind of amenities and this kind of like experience again. Yep. People are almost going to kind of expect that. Yep. I and that's going to become more like the baseline. Yep. And people are going to want to stay with somebody that's doing it professionally. And then some other people are going to want to stay with. Well, because of the price. Because of the price. But that's that's the difference. That's Our price not, is going to be higher than theirs. Yes. But that's not the customer that we're serving. That's true. But that is something to look at as a business, you know. If you have the same space, do you want to be the guy charging more or the guy charging less? Well, you know what? And and, listen, and you're right. Okay, listen, listen. We we had that come up here recently because we just lowered some of our prices because January is a typically a slow month it is it's it's a historically low but when you lower the prices you attract a different you attract a walmart clientele you do and and we noticed that this month we we lowered our prices do you want a walmart clientele in your target plus rental are they going no and it's not because and it's not because what i think you're about to say I think it's because our product doesn't fit their needs. I I think we would exceed their expectations. Yes, but they're not going to appreciate it. No, no, they're not. And they're not going to pay for it because they're not, you know that's why? not what they're looking because for. Because cheese ain't free. Cheese ain't free, but that, that yes, that's something else I want to talk about. <laughs> that's something I'm working on. Cheese ain't free. But you're right. You're okay, right. They it, are. They are not going to appreciate. They're it. not going to appreciate they it. They are going to complain about it, and it's because it doesn't match. Right. Your product has to match your customer. Yes. Your product has to match your customer. Yes, I agree. And when you and and that's part of it. When in this when you and it's very price sensitive. When you, when I noticed this because we had a a glitch in our system earlier this year. Last month, actually, I remember. where we were ac- accidentally charging more, I remember than we were supposed to be. Yep, and all of a sudden we started attracting like these nice, high quality bookings. Yes, I remember. And it was almost like a fluke to say, "Oh, maybe we should be charging more," because a lot of times that's true. It's perceived value. Yes, it's perceived value. Isn't that interesting? It is. I mean, we could go into a whole discussion oh, about yeah, totally. that, but it's kind of like, why does a Lexus, you know, sell for more than a Toyota? It's the same damn car. 
You realize that, right? Lexus is Toyota. Infinity is Nissan. Why does it sell for more? It's got it's a it's a Maxima. It's a you know it's a it's a Corolla, right? It's just got more stuff on it, and it says Lexus or Infinity. I I guess because of the it's perceived value, perceived value, and yes, experience. And experience. because if I go to a Lexus dealership, I That's get treated true. differently than That's I do true. if I go to a Toyota dealership. That's true. Don't I? Oh, that is a beautiful comparison it is a beautiful color because it's the same damn car oh. and people that buy lexuses will tell you no it's not the same right <laughs> and it's not because they get a different experience right that's exactly what they're paying for right you're paying for the experience they know they're buying a toyota but mm-hmm. they're not buying a they're buying an experience yes not a car right because it's the same quality car Ooh, that is a beautiful comparison i love that and that's exactly what well played. We've been talking about for a while now in this podcast, but that's kind of something we. This is what we do. We sit around and <laughs> hash this stuff out, and then when he's like, "Ooh," and then I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> you're right." We muse about it. We do. We muse. We muse about different things, and we kind yes. of amaze each other. Yes. Yes. We're like, "Oh man, that is genius." Yeah, dude, you're brilliant. <laughs> Wendy. Oh, if only you told me I was brilliant more. Oh, I do. You yeah. just don't hear it. <laughs> That's not true. Maybe it's not the experience you're expecting. <laughs> 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 kind of provide Wendy with a better experience. <laughs> Can I get a little wine over here? I'm a Toyota, and she's like, I'm looking for a Lexus, man. <laughs> Where's your red carpet sale? <laughs> Can I get some Starbucks? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> hey, I did buy a Keurig for Christmas. That's true, and it's so wonderful. I got my very own Keurig. I mean, it's been... not that I don't use it too, but I, I got it because you wanted it. <laughs> We've been. It was on the. It was on the list. It was on the list. Oh. I, don't buy Christmas presents from Wendy <laughs> for Wendy that are not on her list. That's right. <laughs> She'll be like, "Yeah, oh. that's really nice." And the next day, she's like. <laughs> I'm like Rachel Re-gifting on Friends it or something, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you know, that's the way it is. You don't know me. I do know you quite well, actually. <laughs> so, well, I hope you have enjoyed the podcast. Oh, is this the end? This okay, is, this is the end. Holy crap! It's already been like an hour. Yeah, we should we should probably cut this off. Good and, grief! I mean, we could talk for. We could. We could go. Another we could go hour, a whole probably. other hour. Yes, we'll save that for next week. All right, we'll do it next time. <laughs> the more exciting adventures right. of John and Wendy <laughs> staying uptown. <laughs> so, I have totally forgotten all the. Um, oh, you want me to do Facebook? It? Do the Ooh, let me do it. Do the Facebook and and all that. How you can contact us. So, thank you for listening to the Cash Flow Couple Podcast. You can reach us on. <laughs> Facebook at the Cash Flow Couple. You can reach at, out to us by email. Info. Info at the Cash Flow Couple dot com. Info at the Cash Flow Couple dot com. Right. Uh, That'll get to us. I think that's pretty much the two places you can find us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like and subscribe to the podcast as well. That actually helps us know whether. You know, there's somebody actually out there listening, but it also helps us, you know, go up the rankings and, you know, it helps other people find us that might be interested in hearing this kind of content. So actually, actually subscribing to it doesn't cost anything, obviously, but if you go on Apple iTunes, you can hit subscribe or, you know, I have an Android, Android phone. So I, I listen on uh, Google Play or Castbox or there's a ton of them. But if you subscribe on there, it actually does help. Or just send us send us some emails and uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, we read all the emails personally. So we do. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's interesting. So, well, thanks for listening, and uh, we will see you again next time. Merci, au revoir. <laughs>